Hey guys, it's Amy. Welcome back to 2 Plus. Um, I wanted to do another update and kind of let you guys know what's going on right now with my health. Um, the last update video I did was I think about a month ago now and some things have changed. So I just wanted to, like I said, just kind of talk to you, let you know what's happening and where we stand right now. So in my last video, I had talked about how I was trying to lose some weight and I was trying to do low carb as much as I could. Um, I know I have a lot of new subscribers and I have some previous videos talking about all of the different health conditions that I have and I have quite a few, but I'm just going to do a quick rundown to kind of let you know where, where I'm at, where I'm coming from. So. First of all, I am diabetic. Um, I have a lot of complications from diabetes. So I have had retinopathy in my eyes. I am considered legally blind. Um, then I also have a condition called gastroparesis, which means that my stomach is paralyzed. That is also a result of the diabetes from nerve damage. Um, so that tends to make me very ill a lot of the time. Um, it makes it hard for me to digest food, which in turn makes it hard to eat healthy food. Uh, for example, I, I cannot eat a lot of fiber. I cannot eat most raw fruits or vegetables. I can't eat salad. So as you can imagine, if you're trying to lose weight, that makes it very difficult not being able to eat those those foods that we typically think of as being healthy foods. Um, so then in addition to the gastroparesis um, and kind of as a combined result of diabetes and gastroparesis, I now have chronic kidney disease. So that's the big one that we're dealing with right now is the kidneys. Um, at one point, I, I had reached a point where we did start the process of talking about a kidney transplant. Um, we, we went through some of the first steps, some of the initial testing and preparation for that. And then actually my kidneys had improved somewhat. And for quite a while now, I've, I've been considered stable. So the next thing my kidney doctor had recommended, and I talked about this in my previous health update videos, was that they want me to lose some weight. Um, because if I do get to a point where we need to move ahead with the kidney transplant, then I, I will have to lose some weight before I will be approved for that surgery. So that's what I had been working on the last couple of months. I was trying to do low carb as much as possible, not not completely no carbs, but low carbs, um, because like I said, I am diabetic. So, you know, that's usually the first thing they would tell you being diabetic is try to eat low carbs. So it, it made sense to me. And my kidney doctor had also recommended uh, the previous times that we were there, she was telling me that I should try to eat more protein um, because I, I really wasn't eating a lot of protein. So those two factors combined just made me think that a low carb diet was going to be the very best thing that I could do. I had done low carb before years ago um, when I had been overweight also and, and it had worked for me. So, you know, I knew that it would work and, and I felt like it would be a good, a good option. So we did that for I think it was pretty close to two months that we were doing that. Um, we were trying to work out and I was trying to, I was really trying to get as much protein as I could. And then, like I said, as low carb as I could. So I was, I was using protein powder. I was eating a lot of cheese and meat, um, mostly things like turkey and chicken and things like that. I don't, I don't eat red meat because of my gastroparesis also. So, you know, I was just trying to do all those things that I thought were the right things to do. And then I, I started feeling 
really not good. <laughs> really, really not good. Um, I was getting back to a point where I had been before where I could barely get out of bed. Um, I pretty much was, I was forcing myself to get out of bed and get dressed, but then I literally just was sitting in a chair all day that, and that was all I could do. I, I could barely handle that. Um, and so the last time then that I went back to my kidney doctor to get things checked out, um, I'm trying not to cry <laughs> we we found out that my kidneys were much much worse um, in fact they were the worst that they had ever been for me and so in you know we were we were thinking okay it's gonna be time to probably start dialysis um, which I really had not wanted to do I, I was trying to avoid that if I could so, um, you know, because it, because it was just one test that showed that, um, we weren't going to start dialysis just based on that test. So they wanted me to wait and come back in three weeks and, and see where I was at. And they told me, you know, if I got any worse, if I was feeling any worse to let them know, and we could start basically at any time, you know, any, any time that we let them know we were ready we could start. So that was shocking to me. It really, even, even though I had been feeling bad for probably a week before that appointment, I just, I just really did not expect that. It really took me by surprise. So I cried that day <laughs> and we went home and I just kept thinking things over, you know, like why, why did it get so much worse so quickly? And when I started doing some more research, I found that for the stage that I was in my kidney disease, like the stage that I'm at right now, actually protein is not good for your kidneys because your kidneys have to filter a lot of substances that come along with protein and and not only that but the worst type of protein that you could have would be animal protein which would include not only meat such as turkey and chicken but also cheese and dairy products and that was mostly what i was eating and and in fact the the protein powder that I found, and I talked about it in my last video, it was a bone broth protein powder, which should have been good for my gastroparesis, but because it was made from animal products, it was, it was terrible for my kidneys. So I was a little, for a little bit, I was angry. Um, because I kind of felt like my doctor had misled me by telling me that I needed to eat all this protein. I needed to eat more protein. And, and that was really not what I needed to do. So, you know, I thought when, when I started researching this and finding these things out, I thought, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna change. I'm going to change again. I'll change my habits again. And I started cutting out all of that protein. And so I did that for three weeks. And then when I went back to the kidney doctor again and they rechecked, my kidneys were much better. And they had, they had almost gone back to the point that they were at before when I was considered stable. Not quite, but they were very close to being back to where they were. And so that, that confirmed to me that it was the protein that had caused all of these problems. So that's where we're at right now. Um, that's been about, it's been a couple of weeks now. I think it's almost been three weeks now since, since we found out that my kidneys were a little bit better. Um, and I'll be going back in about two weeks to get rechecked again and kind of see where we're at. So it's, 
you know, in a way it's really discouraging to have these setbacks like that and then and then kind of find out that it's something that you were doing that caused that caused the setback. But you know, it was probably a good education for me <laughs> to you know, and I feel like I do that. Like like when a doctor tells me something or advises something, I usually I usually will do the research. I usually will spend hours you know, researching and reading medical journals and, you know, articles and everything I can find to find out if that's the best advice, if that's, if that's the right thing to do. And for some reason this time, I just, I just didn't do that. And so, you know, lesson learned. <laughs> I won't make that mistake again, hopefully. So we're continuing on. We are trying alternative things. Um, like I said, I just, I really would like to avoid dialysis for as long as I can, if that's possible. Um, so one thing that we kind of stumbled upon, um, another little thing that we're going to try is a sauna. Um, and we, <laughs> we sort of stumbled upon this because a couple weekends ago, it's been two weeks now, we went on a little trip for our wedding anniversary, just a quick little weekend trip. We left on Friday evening, came back on Sunday, and we went up into the mountains, and the car that we have right now does not have any air conditioning, and we live in Tennessee, and it's June. <laughs> so that is not a great combination, and in fact, a lot of times being in the heat makes me a kind of ill. So I was a little nervous about that, and I did have some rough patches over the weekend. Um, but we did we did manage to have some fun and, you know, fit in some fun times there. But um, especially on Sunday when we were driving back home, it was, it was hot. I was tired. I was not feeling good. And I started... I started sweating a lot and I am I'm normally not a very sweaty person but I was sweating a lot and in fact when we got home on Monday um, when I weighed myself I found out I had lost 10 pounds over that weekend over like two and a half days um, just from all of the sweating that I was doing for being so hot and that that was kind of what triggered me to think like hmm so I started researching kidney patients using saunas. And I found several articles by doctors who talked about the benefits of using a sauna for people with kidney disease because your kidneys, their purpose is to filter out toxins out of your body. Any, anything that's bad gets filtered out by your kidneys. And when your kidneys don't work, then that means those toxins aren't leaving your body. They're, they're stuck inside. And so one of the articles that I was reading, he talked about how using a sauna could, you know, cause some of those toxins to be released through perspiration. And so we ended up, I did some more research again, <laughs> and I found out that you could buy a portable sauna that you can use in your home because, a, you know, a real sauna is incredibly expensive crazy crazy expensive and I did find that there were some places that like businesses that have saunas and you know kind of like a gym you can go in and you can use the sauna but the closest ones to us were close to an hour away and and I can't drive so that wasn't really an option so I actually have ordered a portable sauna and we're gonna try that out to see if it has any benefit for me um, so I'm excited about that to see if that's going to make a difference. Um, I think that's I think that's everything that I wanted to share with you right now. Um, like I said, the the kidney the kidney up and down roller coaster is is the big thing that we're dealing with right now. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> so I will I will update you guys again. If, if anything changes, if and when anything changes. And 
just share this part of the journey with you. So thanks for watching. If you're new here, I would love to have you subscribe to my channel. Um, I share a lot of videos talking about all of the health issues, but I also like to share thrift hauls and I'm going to start trying to do some DIY videos and things like that. So I would love to have you come along and join me on this journey. Thanks for watching guys. Thank you.